All right, here's One Star Rob out at the Energy Farm. This is the air inlet for our retort biochar stove. What you're looking at here is the flames shooting out from beneath the 30 gallon drum inside the retort. Uh, we are driving off the volatile organic compounds as syngas, as syngas is hitting this superheated region beneath the retort uh, and igniting into that flame. That flame is going up around the 30 gallon drums. Uh, inside the 55 gallon drum which we have buried inside this dirt pile it's hard to see but down there at the base above the inlet the steel is actually glowing red hot where it's insulated by the sand as we move up you'll see that we've uh, boiled off all the water that was in the sand on top that we're using for insulation Then, as we go up the stack uh, we're getting a lot cleaner burn than we were much earlier today. There's still definitely a lot of unburned uh, hydrocarbons in there, so it's not a clean burn. We could definitely scrub that down further. An afterburner might be a great idea here. And we're also not using the waste heat for any purpose other than just uh, making it slightly uncomfortable to be next to it in this very muggy morning. Uh, the result of this should be at least 30 pounds of char. Uh, to come out of there. Uh, it might be less because I doubt I will stop the burn at exactly the right time as this is the first shot. Uh, but all told we basically all you need is a 50 gallon drum, 30 gallon drum, and some stovepipe. Uh, $30 and you should be making char on your own. You could also wrap if you don't have a giant pile of dirt like we do. Um, vermiculite is a great insulation as is fiberglass. Uh, you'll want that insulation around that 50 gallon drum to ensure that the heat is staying inside to get the inside of that 30 gallon drum up to the point where you're beginning to drive off those hydrocarbons and volatile organics so you can create that nice flame on the bottom and get that kind of perpetual flame going. All right, well thanks for listening and have fun being the change. All right, One Star Rob here again. We have achieved afterburn. Look at this. We've got uh, the syngas that's being driven off from the wood on the sides of the retort. Uh, it's now hot enough in the chimney flue that we have 100% uh, complete combustion of that syngas within the flue. The T in this pipe is specifically to reinduct oxygen into those flue gases to achieve this afterburn effect. Uh, it did take almost an hour for us to get to the point where it would hold that burn and now it's uh, apparently gone out during the video. Uh, it's a work in progress but that was really exciting to see. So we'll look to reignite that here in a minute. Alright so now the charcoal is done. We're finished up with the burn. Uh, we let it sit for a day to dry off. You do not want to reintroduce oxygen to hot charcoal. Uh, it could create an explosive situation. Uh, to make sure your charcoal is done, it should have this nice, dark, black, uniform color. And it should be very brittle, so it's charred all the way through. Um, it can also make that kind of tinkling sound there. Here's a piece that isn't quite done. You can see there's charcoal on the edge, but I'm not able to break it. So that one is just torrified, and it's not quite done, so we'll throw that aside and get it ready for next time. So what we'll do next is we'll likely take this and break it up into smaller chunks and then we'll set it up to be charged with nitrogen, uh, probably with a comfrey tea soak, and we will get this ready uh, to be reintroduced to the soil for next season.